That's super helpful. So that kind of dovetails into probably my last question, which is just, you know, your your thoughts on AB5 slash the employee debate and just, you know, what do you think is best for them? And then maybe what do you think ultimately happens? Best for drivers or best for Uber and Lyft? Yeah, best, best for drivers. Yeah, I think what's best for drivers is, I mean, it really kind of depends on the camp that you're in, right? If you're a full-time driver, I think there's no doubt. And, that, and that's sort of where I've tried to shift a lot of the conversation in AB5 is understand like there are winners and losers in this. It's not, you know, everyone's going to get rich and you know smell the roses when all is said and done. There's going to be trade-offs. Maybe, maybe trade-offs is a, is a better word than winners and losers. And I think that frankly, you know, full-time drivers, like they would be big winners. Um, in becoming employees uh, for the most part. You know, I think that maybe it won't work out exactly, you know, the way they're hoping. Maybe Uber, you know, won't let them work 30 hours a week so that they don't have to pay health care or won't let them go over 40 so that they don't have to pay overtime, which is, you know, 150 or time and a half in California. There's some weird little caveats like that. But I do think for the most part, it will, it will be better for those drivers who are full-time, um, you know, doing 40, 50 hours a week. And I think for the part-time drivers, the ones like, you know, let's say take someone like me who, you know, I'll go out occasionally, I'll drive a few hours here and there. I'm like a terrible employee to Uber and Lyft. Like, they probably hate me, you know, like imagine if I, you know, if they had to try and schedule this guy who works like once every month, you know, once a month or wants to work 10 hours one week and zero hours the next. Like if you've ever hired anyone, that's a total nightmare um, and makes things really challenging. So I think that uh, there's definitely, you know, some downsides to becoming employees, but at the same time, you know, you kind of have to understand the trade-offs. Like New York City, I know we talked about is a good example where they instituted a minimum pay, and that's one component of becoming an employee. There's a whole lot of other benefits that you would get, but minimum wage basically is one component. And the way they did it in New York City was pretty smart, um, but the trade-off is that now you can't log on whenever and wherever you want. And in my opinion, I think that's fair. Um, a lot of drivers don't like that system in New York City because they're locked out. But I mean, if you kind of ask for the ability to be paid a guaranteed minimum wage, you shouldn't be logging on on a Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> where you're not going to be making any money anyways. And that's really what my whole site is about. It's about right. teaching drivers not to do those actions like that. So it's sort of almost like, you know, with the minimum wage, it's forcing you to go into these, you know, certain areas. And I think that benefits a lot of drivers. It benefits a lot of new drivers who hop onto the platform and don't really know what they're doing. And, you know, might be like, this job sucks. I only made $5 an hour. It's because you weren't doing the right things. Um, and so I think that, you know, kind of, I'm sort of answering your question in a long winded way, but generally, uh, like you know, sort of, so sort of with AB5, like, I don't think the trade offs of every driver becoming an employee are worth it. I think it'll benefit. I mean, if you look at it mathematically, like it will benefit, you know, if you kind of agree with me that full time drivers will benefit more than part time, like mathematically, 15 to 20 percent of drivers are full time. So, you know, those drivers will see a lot of benefit, but 80 percent of drivers won't. So it's kind of hard to argue with the math in that sense um, that drivers won't benefit because I still like I said earlier, like, I think there are two or three or four or five things that all drivers care about. And that's more what I would like to see. I think that, you know, maybe to end on things like one of my I, I don't know how feasible this is sort of with the legal structures now and the ABC tests and all of that. But like, I think, you know, I've worked at many businesses where they hired employees and they've also hired independent contractors for the same job. Um, and, you know, the employees kind of got paid less on a, you know, sort of hourly basis, but their employment was more stable. They got more benefits, right? And the independent contractors could be fired at will <laughs> or, you know, fired very easily. And so I think that, you know, I don't, I'm not sold on the fact that, you know, there needs to be this compromise or this hybrid or, you know, uh, employees or even independent contractors but uh, I don't know I'm, I'm, the more and more you know it's, it's, I'm sure it'll keep evolving but the more and more I think about it it does seem like hey you know if, if you could become an employee driver great but if you could also stay independent that seems like it might benefit still a large larger number of people what are the key asks from drivers these days? Like, what are they looking for that they're not yeah. getting? Well, and I think it's a little interesting too now in times of COVID because that's sort of shifted a lot of what drivers care about. You know, right now, there's not a whole lot of rides to go around, um, you know, kind of as we talked about. So I think right now, drivers are really just focused on like getting unemployment and sort of figuring out, you know, the whole maze of navigating the federal government, you know, PUA system and unemployment insurance and things like that. And I don't think they're actually counting on Uber and Lyft 
for a whole lot, but sort of pre-COVID and probably as things get more back to normal, I think just generally drivers, you know, it's funny, like a lot of times uh, the, you know, you know, people ask me this question is like what drivers care about. And it's like a very simple answer. It's money. They just want to make more. <laughs> you know, I think like, you know, making money is not unique to being an Uber Lyft driver. I think everybody cares about income, making more, um, you know, making more money, you know, kind of like growing uh, their income and things like that. And while there are some unique aspects of the driving jobs, you know, like the flexibility, like you can log on, log, log off whenever you want and drive whenever and wherever. Of course, you know, there's certain strategies you want to use to make the most amount of money. I think that part is unique, but the sort of, you know, the, the thing that unites everyone, whether you want to be an employee or independent contractor is that you want to make more money, right? Employees, you know, may want additional healthcare, um, you know, independent contractors might want to make more money, but I think every single driver, if you ask them, like, would you like to make more per mile? They would all say yes, 100%, <laughs> maybe 99%. So I think that's kind of number one. And then from there, you know, I think it actually, you know, there's a few things that all drivers care about. And that's sort of why I have not been like a full, you know, I actually, I guess, you know, in the past, if you asked me if I supported drivers being employees, I said no, um, because I think that there's more things that all drivers care about. You know, employees, you get health insurance, you get overtime, you get a lot of benefits, but it's not something that every driver cares about. I think that every driver cares about getting paid more, not being unfairly deactivated because the deactivation process with Uber and Lyft is really sketchy if you ask me um, you know the rating system is kind of a mess uh, you know you're kind of like a lot of drivers have a lot of anxiety over ratings even though frankly like most drivers are never going to be deactivated and don't have to worry about it but you know it's it, it's anxiety inducing <laughs> to you know not know what you right. did wrong and your driving career you know kind of hinges on some drunk 23 year old guy right <laughs> taking a ride so you know I right. think there's things like that that all drivers do care about 